African Liberation Day um, speaks firstly to our African identity, an identity which many of us have chosen to reject and have chosen to forget. Um, one of the issues that we have in Barbados and through the rest of the Caribbean is that we have suffered from what one researcher has called um, post-slavery traumatic syndrome. All of that me simply means that there, there's much in our past, much of our cultural heritage that has, has been jettisoned. And much of that has happened because there was a deliberate attempt to, um, at deculturation of our people uh, from the Middle Passage until we landed in Barbados and elsewhere in the Caribbean. Um, our, our people were forced into a way of life that tended to, to subjugate the African identity, the African culture, the language. But thankfully, some of that has remained with us. So African Liberation Day also seeks to recover some of what has, well, we thought was lost, but which is still present with us. Kamo is on a, what I may call a voyage of discovery. Um, we returned to Barbados in the 1970s. Um, he, um, it became very clear that Barbadians, the other persons within the Caribbean, had a species of forgetfulness. And he, um, and he was saying that here in Barbados, it was not about here. In other words, the, the, not about here, things African, they don't belong to us. And he was surprised at it. Um, he, he also noted that in, while in Trinidad, you might, you might, you might find um, uh, remnants of African religion. In Cuba, you might find, throughout the Caribbean, Santeria. Uh, you might find, you might find Voodoo. You might find that, um, you know, Shango. Um, but this was absent. So he, he wondered what had happened in Barbados. And so in the poem, there is a, an attempt to, to look into the in the recesses of the of Barbadian um, activity um, and look to see what Barbadians were doing that might in fact speak to that African heritage. And he found some of it too in strange places, in the church, um, in sometimes in, among the spiritual battles and others, he found it in the drumming and the dancing and the, yes, he found it there. And, and, and one of the things that he realized was that, that uh, while uh, people were saying it was lost, it was there all the time. And, 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 and to some extent, that the poem is a, a long, long discussion about where you can find these things. When I, when I sit down and think about it, we in this African Liberation Day is really designed to bring us back to where we ought to be, uh, to respect where our forefathers came from, and to, um, to get rid of this, this denial. Uh, it's time that we, that we get to that point, and African Liberation Day is this is the, the, what we call the, the perfectly placed occasion to help us to, um, to come back to ourselves. When I returned to Barbados in 1972, it was my Annus Mirabilis of Carifesta and Odale and Mother Poem. The beautiful large warden upstairs Ogun house with its upper story veranda jutting out into the shack shack tree where Adam first met Essie. And by the way, she was not tight-tongued. She, touching him softly out in the spangled darkness, was, as I say, in ruin. But the place where Bobob's workplace had been, that large square concrete floor area, had been converted into a Zion meeting place, a Wednesday night prayer meeting place. And remember that wood or wood Warden or Wednesday, a polytone and polyrhythmic hand clap, tie head, tambourine and singing place. Now, I had always been told that Bajan had no culture. And when abroad and asked to do something from our culture, we sheepishly said so or no. Certainly no native religious culture, something, i.e. nothing, that tied us to Africa. But in Barbados, thank God, we ain't got none of that. And I have found this attitude, this platitude, this altitude, really, in many other places in the Caribbean. Once, for instance, in Belize, I made a long, hard trip to South St. Anne, 
Dan Grigger to see the Garifuna, the great black Carib people who had come out of St. Vincent, been expelled, in fact, as militant maroons by the British during the wars of the Haitian Revolution in 1795-96. And I had asked to see how and where they worship, and of course they were all ordinary and Christian like everybody else, and therefore worship no different from anybody else in church or chapel, tabernacle, Garifuna being in this sense they wanted me to think, in no way different from anybody else. It's only when I persist and ask to see the drums and the people whisper checking me out and go off to speak to somebody else, etc, etc, et you know how it go, that eventually I am brought to their kinda or kunda, their place of drums, a round gold straw benab somewhere out in the bush where their drums and dreams not only are but were carefully covered and clearly very well cared for, etc 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 and soon let me put it this way there was one person then and then several and soon there was a slow sudden relaxation among those who were all gathered together in that place and they were laughing and talking and beating drum and people were dancing and there was the fine spray of ritual ikor adugu it was as if all those black carib Christians had become Garifuna nation again since they have unsubmerged themselves and are giving me the greatest privilege of seeing them since in seeing them I realize now I was seeing, learning myself, ourselves. But at first they had denied it. Too many hundred years you see of insult neglect, deculturation, apparent deculturation have so corrupted us that we are ashamed to face our face, admit ourselves even unto our very selves, especially since these things have not been accepted by government house. Present company, of course, accepted. And so, I'd been told that there was nothing in Barbados that could be similar to Shango or Cumin or Kandoble. Though right here in my great grand uncle Dogu's musical house fall into pieces, the little carpenter shop section of it was alight with gas, light flambeau, and the shattering tambourine movement inside there worshipping their Wednesday night sun sum and their hand clap boomba and clap hand voices. And at some stage, I become aware that there has been what I can only call an alteration of consciousness within that place, this place, they, me, we. It was all as if the world I knew didn't know, more and more of the world that I knew didn't know was getting involved, slowly turning all the pebbles and shells I had ever walked on, all the music I had ever heard all altering as I listen, listen, from being Bajan into something other, something else, a nearer, nearer, better known than we had ever known before, so me thing, forgotten, yes, and far, and far, and further on, and farther, yes, and making new, and making you, locomotive engine, so come quick, cattle train, lick the long rails, choo-choo, Chattanooga pick the long trail down to town. Come, bugle train. <laughs> 